In this video, I'll go over the installation instructions for the Puma software. The first step is to get the Puma zip file, which should have been given from the software.nasa.gov catalog. The first step is to extract the zip file into its folder. Once this is done, open up the resulting folder and go to the readme.txt. Here you'll see at the top the notices and disclaimers that come with the software. Uh, scrolling down, you'll also see system requirements and recommended computer specifications, and finally the installation instructions. I'm going to go through these instructions step by step in order to install the software on this machine. The first step is to verify the dependencies. This is done by opening up a terminal, and for step 1a, we need to check that we have a properly installed version of Qt. This is done by using the command qmake dash dash version. And as you can see, we have on this machine a uh, Qt version 4.8.7. Uh, this just has to be 4.6 or above. Um, as noted in instruction 1a, sometimes this is the command qmake dash qt4 or qmake dash qt5, but on most machines, including Ubuntu machines, it'll just be qmake. The next step, step 1b, is to verify that the GCC compiler has been installed. This is done by typing in GCC dash dash version. And you can see that we're using version 6.2. This has to be version 4.4.7 or above. Uh, moving on, step two is to extract the file, which we've already done. Step three through five are downloading the required external libraries. There are three external li libraries that Puma uses and for convenience and because this step does not require um, root access for the computer, um, it's expected that this software will be used by um, primarily government and university where the user may not always have root access to the machine. So the installation instructions were um, developed with that in mind. The three external libraries can be downloaded from the direct links provided. and then each of them needs to be moved into the Puma V2.1 libs folder. So there's the first one, which is the FFTW library. The second library on step four is the lib tiff library. And finally in step five, the Q custom plot library. Once this has been done, the libraries must be installed. I have provided a sample installation script which uh, can be used. To use the script, navigate into the, the Puma folder. Um, this is done, in this case, in the desktop, Puma v2.1. And then here you should see a script called install libraries.sh. If the script is green when you run an ls command, uh, it's already executable. If it's not green, you have to run chmod 700 install libraries.sh, which is step number seven. After that's done, simply run the script and it should install all the libraries. Once that's complete, we'll move on to step number nine, which is entering the source directory. From here, all the source code is, uh, is presented in the, in the various folders. The first step is to execute the qmake command, which will uh, create the make file. In the case of this machine, the command is simply qmake puma.pro. 
in the event that your qmake command is, uh, for example, qmake-qt4, qt5, that must also be done, or in the event that qmake has been, uh, or qt has been installed locally, you can, um, you can place here the address to the qmake executable. Once this is done, you'll see that a make file has been produced. The next step is just to run make. Um, if you want to run it in parallel, do make-j and then uh, however many threads you want to use. The compilation will probably take um, somewhere between one and three minutes. Now once this has been complete, we move on to step 12 and we can see that Puma can now be run by running the resulting executable. And there's the software. Uh, it's recommended that Puma be set up such that it can be run from any location in the terminal with just a simple Puma command. This is detailed in the recommended additional instructions which I'll go over now. The first step is to add the add an alias to your bash RC. Uh, this is done by editing your bash RC file, which is done as shown here. What you want to do is add at the bottom of the file, copy and paste from the readme.txt. and insert the path to the Puma directory. Save the file and exit out. Once that's been done, you need to source the bash RC, which is done by typing source dot bash RC. Uh, now, from any terminal, Puma can be run with just a simple Puma command. And that's it for the installation instructions. If anything didn't work, as, um, as explained in this video, please first reference the README to see if any of the steps were missed. Uh, next, if that does not work, please reference the Puma documentation, which can be found in the Puma v2.1 folder under Docs, Puma documentation. Uh, starting around page 61 is where the installation instructions are. If the installation instructions do not help, then please do not hesitate to contact the uh, point of contact, which is uh, joseph.c.ferguson at nasa.gov.